Hello and welcome to Badger Talks Live, which brings exciting happenings, resources, and talent from your UW flagship campus to the people of Wisconsin and beyond. I am Ashley Kent from Oshkosh, Wisconsin. I am a senior in the Mead Witter School of Music studying vocal performance, and today I'm honored to introduce the Wingro Wind Quintet, which is one of our faculty ensembles. They will be sharing a new performance of 20th century music by Hungarian composers, which was recorded a few weeks ago in our beautiful New Channel Music Center. The quintet consists of Timothy Hagen on flute, Andreas Esti on oboe, Alicia Lee playing clarinet, Mark Vallone with bassoon, and Devin Cobley Morrison on horn. Alicia, a world-renowned musician and our assistant professor of clarinet, will be starting us off with some commentary to give background on each piece. Please welcome Alicia Lee. Hi everyone, my name is Alicia Lee. Thank you so much, Ashley, for that wonderful introduction. I teach clarinet at the Mead Witter School of Music here at UW-Madison. I've been in Madison for about three years, having moved here from New York where I was a student and then freelanced as a performer for uh, just over 10 years. One of the most rewarding aspects about my job here at UW is that I get to play in a faculty ensemble. And in this case, it is the Wingra Wind Quintet, which is a group made up of a flute, oboe, clarinet, bassoon, and horn. The Wind Quintet is kind of like the counterpoint to the string quartet in that it's a sort of standard formation that as players of wind instruments, we often find ourselves in. However, unlike a string quartet where all the players produce sound in the same way, if you can imagine a string instrument with the bow always moving across the strings different way, a wind quintet is an interesting and challenging proposition as we are five instruments that produce our sounds all in very different ways. And I'm gonna go through those really quickly and I apologize to any of my musician colleagues who might be watching a little bit crudely. I'm gonna start with the flute, which might be perhaps the most familiar of the wind instruments. The sound is produced much like blowing air across a bottle. I have a little prop here. The oboe and the bassoon are called double reed instruments, which means they have two small pieces of wood. And um, again, very crude uh, demonstration of this, two small pieces of wood that they bind together with string, with thread, they tied here. When they blow into this double reed, it produces a kind of unique buzzy sound, which then would resonate through their instruments. The clarinet, my instrument, which I actually have to demonstrate here, also uses a reed, but in this case, it is a single reed, meaning it is just one piece of wood at the top, which is bound to this plastic piece here called the mouthpiece. And when I put it, when I blow across it, it vibrates against the mouthpiece to produce the sound. And finally, we have the horn, sometimes called the French horn. This is the only instrument that can pass quite freely between the woodwind and the brass families. And it's because it has such a beautiful, blendable and flexible sound. It can play the heroic theme of Star Wars and also blend into the texture of a wind quintet which is what we often ask Devin, our horn player, to do. The horn, like all brass instruments, produces sound by a buzzing of the lips. There are a lot of different kinds of buzzes, and I've always been terrible at this. That kind of sound, which you do into a conical mouthpiece, a cone-shaped mouthpiece, and then it uh, resonates through the shape, through the instrument, through the brass instrument. The wind gray wind quintet is made up of these five unique instruments. And because we all produce our sound in such different ways, the quality and timbres of our instruments are extremely distinctive. So we spend a great majority of our time working to get our attacks together and also to blend our sounds together. As a group, we are particularly drawn to the music from the 20th and 21st centuries. In some ways, we have no choice since the large major majority of our concert repertoire comes from the 20th century. And as Ashley said, we're gonna, we have two works to present to you today, both from the 20th century. 
We recorded these in our beautiful new recital hall, the Collins Recital here, Recital Hall, here on campus at UW. And we pulled together some selections from a program that we had performed based on music from Eastern Europe. The first is a transcription of a piece by the Hungarian composer Béla Bartók. Bartók is one of the most important Hungarian composers of the 20th century. If you've, ever, if you've ever seen the Stanley Kubrick film, The Shining, which is a favorite of mine, you have heard Bartók. One of his greatest large-scale works, music for strings, percussion, and celeste, is featured prominently in this film. Bartók wrote a lot of dramatic, expansive music, as well as music for smaller ensembles, and also many solo piano pieces. All of his work was heavily influenced by his fascination with the folk music of his native Hungary, and he spent a lot of time traveling the countryside, recording and transcribing thousands of original tunes. He transformed some of these tunes into a set of nearly 80 short pieces that he wrote for solo piano entitled For Children. Our bassoonist, Professor Marc Vallon, created wonderful arrangements of nine of these short tunes, five of which we recorded back in January. Now, one of the most beautiful things about these pieces is since they were written to be played by children, each tune has a very clear and simple emotional affect. We begin with Allegro. It's a simple, cheerful song sung over a rollicking rhythmic accompaniment. Next, we have a slow and plaintive melody, which begins in the bassoon and then is taken over by the oboe. And this melody is paired with open, spacious drones in the other instruments, creating a lamenting mood. Incidentally, this piece is called Lament. Next, we have the teasing song. Here, we have the help of offbeats or the bouncy notes that come on the unexpected weak part of, a rhythm, of the rhythm, which is sort of like bop, bop. This texture propels the lively melody forward. The fourth piece is called the Peasant's Flute, which features the flute. It has a beautiful improvisatory feel, as if the melody and story are being woven as we go. And finally, the game of tag. Here we have another simple melody that is chased around the group, and we each get an opportunity to be it. As you listen, let us know if any questions come up about the music, about our instruments, or about us, the players. Please send them over to us on Facebook. Here are five pieces from Four Children by Bela Bartok, arranged by Marc Vallon.
Hi again. We had a few questions come up that I wanted to take some time to answer. And actually one came uh, earlier this morning that I neglected to discuss. And it was about, it was about the bar talk in specific. Um, someone had asked whether or not there were lyrics to go along with the, the children's songs. And I, um, I tried to do some quick research of my own. I spoke to Mark Vallone, the arranger of the piece. And I, I don't know of any lyrics specifically for these songs. I imagine, you know, that, they're, that they were based on music with, with words. But unfortunately, um, we were not able to find those lyrics uh, in preparation for this. So I apologize for that, but that is definitely something we would want, we would be interested to pursue and, and learn more about. Um, the titles, however, do give a good indication what a lot of these songs would have been about. Teasing song, lament, game of tag, etc. So, um, you know, we did our best to use our imagination to try and imbue as much meaning as we could into these melodies. Another question came up about where we were performing. This is the Collins Recital Hall in the new Hamill Music Center, which just opened this last fall. So we were very lucky to be in there to do our recording session. It's such a beautiful space and to take advantage of the great acoustics of this room. Um, and so we're, that's one of the, the wonderful things about working on this campus is that we have these beautiful new rehearsal and concert spaces available to us. Um, and another question came up about uh, my background. Uh, wanting to know a little bit more about, um, I guess, my deal. Uh, as I mentioned before, I, I moved to Madison from New York. I went to school at Columbia University and also studied at Juilliard for, for my musical studies. Uh, I moved to Los Angeles for graduate work and did my master's out there, and then I moved back to New York City. I came to New York to do a fellowship program that was sponsored by Carnegie Hall and the Juilliard School. It's called Ensemble Connect. This is a fellowship, a two-year fellowship that um, brings together uh, about 15 young musicians to perform chamber music together, small ensemble uh, works, and to also teach in New York City public schools. So I was uh, working in a public school, visiting once a week as a teaching artist, um, bringing music into the classroom and working with the general music teacher there to um, help develop and, and bring new, new ideas to their music curriculum. Um, after I finished the, the fellowship, I, I stayed in New York City and I freelanced for a while. And what that means is I did a lot of everything. I started my own group, first of all, it's called Dakota, And it's a group that's still based in New York City. And it was made up of all the alumni that came out of Ensemble Connect. So that group right now is made up of about 30 musicians, many of us sort of scattered across the country now and some across the world. But we still work together. We have a strong interest in community engagement and alongside our chamber music. I also um, played with a lot of different orchestras in New York. I did a lot of contemporary music performing, so music that was written very recently, 20th, 21st century music. I did um, some Broadway, so I would be a substitute player on a couple of Broadway shows. Um, so in this way, you kind of cobble together a very interesting musical life. It's a lot of work and it's a lot of, um, it takes a lot of energy. And um, so moving out to Madison to really uh, start teaching full time was, it was a quite a big change of pace for me, but actually a really welcome one and I really enjoyed being a part of this of an institution and having so many wonderful resources available to me. We're going to move on to the next piece which is again I apologize I think something went wrong with my internet connection there. Anyway, I'm going to introduce our next piece, again by a Hungarian composer, this time Andrei Shervansky. He was also a clarinetist. He lived in the mid 20th century and was, his work was heavily influenced by Bartok. I have to admit that Shervansky's music was completely unfamiliar, unfamiliar to me when this piece was proposed among the group. 
but I was delighted to hear that he wrote two pieces for Woodwind Quintet. We chose to learn and perform the first quintet, and the performance you will see now is the fourth and last movement. As a culminating movement of a large work, we find ourselves in a dance-like celebration. One of the distinguishing features that keeps the energy going throughout this movement is the line of short articulated notes that underpin nearly the whole piece. You'll hear how these eighth notes are traded among all five of us, creating a relentless motor that drives us careening all the way to the end. And again, if you have any questions that come up, please let us know. You can uh, write, send them to us on Facebook. Thanks. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, I just wanted to mention uh, some things about my colleagues. Um, Mark Vallone, for those of you who um, are interested in the Baroque music scene, Mark is extremely active in the Baroque scene here in Madison. So you can see him perform on a lot of different kinds of instruments, old instruments um, from the past. Uh, he, so he's often performing in Madison in the Baroque concerts. 
Andreas Esti, our oboe player, he, you'll, you can see him perform sometimes with the Madison Symphony, although I'm sad to say Andreas is leaving us next year um, on to, uh, and he'll be taking on a job at Penn State. Devin, our horn player, freelances with, with many of the groups, local groups, so you can see him perform often in the area. Tim, our flute player, plays in the Dubuque Symphony, and he will also be unfortunately leaving us next year. On to wonderful things. Um, once again, thank you so much for, for joining us today. Thank you very much to Fran and her team over at Badger Talks for hosting Wingra. And you can find this video, I believe it's going to be archived on Facebook and on YouTube as well, if you want to tune in and watch our performance once again. Thank you very much and everyone have a great day.